Here. Commissioner Cohen. Here. Commissioner Jay. Here. Commissioner Middlestat. Here. Commissioner Paraskevis. Here. And Commissioner Swarzler. Here. All right. <clears throat> Everybody have a chance to review the minutes. And uh, if there's any changes we need to make, we can do that now. And if not, we can do a motion to approve the minutes from the uh, February 1st meeting, 2021. I move to approve the, amend the meeting minutes from Monday, February 1st, 2021. Second. Oh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? All right, motion passes. All right, <clears throat> we'll move on to uh, our meeting for tonight. Um, I don't think, are there any other folks out there that have any comments, Karen? Um, nothing with staff reports or presentations. We might, might as well just jump right into the public hearing. And according to my script, Fred, you get to read first. Right, yep, sounds good. Uh, this evening, the Planning Commission will hold a pl uh, public hearing on legislative amendment LA 2021-01 to consider amendment of the Independence Development Code. This revision would make a small change to the science standards and in the Independence Development <laughs> Code. The Planning Commission will make a recommendation to the City Council based on the complete record, including uh, the testimony received at tonight's public hearing. These proceedings will be recorded. This hearing will be held in accordance with the land use procedures required by the City and the State of Oregon. This is a type four legislative procedure. At the beginning of the public hearing tonight, staff will identify the applicable substantive criteria from the city's comprehensive plan and or uh, state of Oregon statewide planning goals. For anyone wishing to speak, we're asking you to use the speaker cards that are provided when called upon to speak. You must be recognized by the chair and you must state your name and address for the public record. Before we begin, does any commissioner wish to declare an actual or potential conflict of interest in this matter for LA 2021-01? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, um, okay, based on that, go for it. All right, I will go ahead and open the public hearing uh, for LA-2021-01. And may we please have a staff report, Fred? You bet. So you will remember that this is a very small code change, very, very small code change that would allow um, more signage for certain uses within a residential zone on Highway 51. Uh, basically, the issue is there's... Um, well, the fire district. The fire district has 24 square footage, uh, square feet of signage. They would like to add a changing image sign in front of their building. Um, currently, they're in the high density residential zone. Um, they would not be allowed to have a changing image sign. They would be limited to their 24 square feet of signage. Um, uh, based on that, um, you know, this. Uh, this revision would would allow some additional uh, signage uh, for certain types of uses, specifically uh, public uses that require a conditional use permit in the in the uh, residential zone, and also uh, public uses that are um, cited along Highway 51. Basically, um, I went through all the criteria. They are in your staff report there. I, I'll just call out, um, well, a couple of, a couple of them. Uh, one is, you know, this seems warranted, especially given the fact that I, you'll remember originally there was the, the weighing the issue. Do we, re, would we rezone this property to make it a public facilities use? Would we put them in a commercial zone? If we did any of that sort of stuff, we would it would require a great deal of analysis to actually like pull the land out of the residential zone, even though it's currently uh, a fire station, right? It, there would be a level of analysis that um, that this does not require. Um, also, um, 
you know, it's an allowed use within the zone. Residential uses are allowed, or excuse me, public facilities uses are allowed uses within the residential zone. And so giving them some additional uh, wiggle room for signage, especially when they're on a major road makes sense. You'll remember um, if this were zoned like the, the landscaping place next to it, they would be allowed something like 169 square feet of signage, um, which is quite a bit different. Um, of that, they could have a changing image sign. Um, so this felt like a good way to go about this. Um, also, um, you know, uh, one of our uh, uh, public facilities goals is policy one from our comprehensive plan is that public facilities serve or public safety services shall be maintained at a satisfactory level to protect the citizens of independence. Now, the the fact of the matter is a lot of fire departments use changing image signs to like get out their messages, right? And um, that's one reason why this feels warranted. I'll, I'll say um, they have a temporary sign out there right now. It puts them over. Uh, they have a reader board sign. It's it, one of those, you know, you got to go out and change it uh, on the on the property. It's it probably, I mean, it definitely puts them over the 24 square feet of signage that they're allowed, but they're trying to use it to communicate to the residents of Independence and Monmouth. This would essentially replace that sign and try and do what they're or and allow what they're trying to do with their with their other sign right now. So um, also, it's not just for this for that lot. It would also apply elsewhere along 50, Highway 51 if there was a public use that came into a lot anywhere uh, along Highway 51 on a large enough uh, lot size. So essentially. Um, I went through it, it meets uh, several of our policies within the, the comprehensive plan. Also, um, it, it definitely meets the requirements for a type four action in the independence development code. Based on that, I would recommend that you folks um, recommend approval of this to the city council. Um, we have gotten no comments about this. We did issue notice to the Department of Land Conservation and Development. We also sent it to uh, the Polk County Itemizer Observer. We've posted it on our website. We've heard uh, nothing uh, in regards to this code change. Oh, Corby, you're on mute. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. Um, any questions of Fred by any of the commissioners? Okay. Um, nobody's out in the waiting room, Karen. No speakers. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing if there's no objections. Um, so this is pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, I guess we just need a motion. Who's the lucky one? <laughs> can I can I suggest a motion, Mr. Chair? Okay. Um, I recommend that somebody um, makes the motion, move to recommend approval to the city council, uh, LA 2021-01 based on findings and recommendations contained in the staff report. All right. That sounds... Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion passes. And who wants I... to second that? Oh. Yeah. Could I, could I find oh. out who the mover and seconder were, please? Was it Tori? I'll, I move her, Tori. Yep. I think we need a second. I'll second, Sally. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> a little ahead of the game here. All right, let's go ahead. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion passes again. Okay, why don't we move along to the second public hearing. And Fred, I'll let you do the honors again. I almost started talking on mute that time. Uh, I, I definitely hit the, the mouse, but, but it didn't uh, it didn't recognize it. So hey, uh, so this is for LA. Oh, uh, same sort of spiel. Um, we should go through the um, anybody 
the script that I read last time, anybody have a conflict of interest about the site plan, site development review standards? No, I don't think so. All right. Okay, then I will go ahead and I will now open the public hearing for LA-2021-02 and a uh, staff report on this please, Fred. Perfect. So this one is, um, is another very small change, but it, you know, I'm convinced that this change is like a uh, important change to make. Um, basically, um, this would make it clear that the 25% expansion that's allowed uh, not subject to the site development review standards uh, only is allowed one time. So somebody can't take that standard and apply, apply uh, get a 25% expansion to their building, and then another 25% expansion to their building, and then another 25% of expansion to their building, and then all of a sudden uh, they've developed the entire site. Um, basically, the reason that this is important is because we do have some folks using this standard to gradually go little by little by little more and more of their site. What that does is it effectively um, limits our ability to apply the legitimate public purposes of our code. Things like traffic impacts where we don't evaluate traffic impacts when people are doing 25, 25, 25, 25. We don't, we don't uh, uh, have some of our landscaping standards uh, apply to the, to the project also. Um, I, well, I, I, I list a number of them in the code. Also, oh yeah, uh, a, a clear one is we don't, we don't ever um, put it out again for public notice. So, um, so essentially what that does is it takes all of the legitimate public purposes that are in our site de de development review standards and it completely ignores them. So if you've got a building on, on your, property, say it's a 10,000 square foot building, and you use that 25% uh, expansion, all of a sudden you've got another 2,500 feet. So you've got a 12,000 square foot building, and then you use it one more time and say you add another 3,000 square feet. Now it's a 15,000 square foot building, and you keep on going and going and going. And so that original 10,000 square foot building could all of a sudden take up <laughs> the entire site without actually going through another public notice. Um, so this is what this is uh, intended to, to limit, to say you can only use that once and the maximum expansion is limited to 8,000 square feet. Basically, that's the intent of this code. Um, I went through and there's numerous times in, in our code where it talks about quality of our, of our comprehensive plan. There's numerous times where it talks about quality of life right? Um, uh, you know, I, I'll just, uh, uh, the goal of economy, I'm on page 17 of your packet, it says, goal for economy to provide for and maintain a viable and diverse economy while preserving the present sense of community and high level of environmental quality. So you'll see that we want to balance growth and preservation of community character, quality of life, all of those sorts of things. The mechanism that we've established for it is the site uh, development review process, right? If a certain use is a certain size, if it's big, you go through site development review. When it goes through site development review, we make sure that it's maintaining uh, quality of life. We, we ensure that it's maintaining environmental quality. Um, those are uh, legitimate public purposes. Also, I'll just call attention to that at the bottom of that page. Uh, I just copied and pasted the purpose of the site development review on page 17. That's the purpose of this section. You'll see what it talks about. Ensure that they, um, uh, they, they maintain a high visual vi quality of visual environment. Uh, make sure they conserve the city's natural beauty. Make sure that they pr protect and enhance the city's visual appeal. Uh, make sure they stay, uh, projects stabilize and improve property values, prevent blighted areas, um, 
you know, and it just keeps on going. F there, achieve the benefit of, of, of pleasant environments for living and working, right? So you'll see that the goal of the site development review process was really to ensure that new development, be it commercial or industrial, protects the city's um, character. So when we allow the opportunity for people just to keep on expanding their building without ever having to go through these standards, our ability to then ensure that those things are met or achieved is, is reduced. So essentially, that's what this code is trying to do. It's a very small change, but like I say, um, I, I do believe it's a, it's a very important change um, just to clarify exactly that that 25% is only one time. Again, we have posted this on our website. We sent it to the Polk County Itemizer Observer. Uh, we sent it to the Department of Land Conservation and Development. And again, we have heard nothing about this. We actually also told um, the one party that's been using this um, to develop their site that this was coming. Um, so they are aware of that as well. So. Can I ask a question, Fred? Yeah. What does one time mean? Is it by property address or by owner of a property? Let's see if I define that. I think that's a good question. I would, I would say property address. Okay. Um, I don't have a preference either way. I just, that's an interpretation that might yeah. be tightened up. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions of Fred? And obviously nobody's shown up outside, Karen. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing if there are no objections. So this is just basically housekeeping. And like Fred just summarized, it, it keeps people from kind of uh, doing more than they sh should be doing without some kind of uh, procedures involved. So anybody has any other comments? I guess I do have a question. Um, I'm sure we talked about it before and I can't remember. Where did the 8,000 square foot come from? Um, it was just a number that literally um, I, I pulled, pulled out. Like, I mean, that number could be any, any number, so. Any other questions? This right. is uh, tying on to what I think Tori brought up a really good point about property address versus owner, because if a property is sold, it seems like this condition would stay with the property address versus being able to then change under new ownership. Good point. Any other com comments? I just have a I have a procedural question then. What's the data record keeping look like at the city for stuff like this? Like, how do you, I mean, that's a really a nuts and bolts question, sorry, but yeah. maybe naive, but. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's great. Um, that's a great question. Um, I'll just say right now our building permit files are, I mean, this is the best place <laughs> that I've ever worked for building permit files. And in, in terms of like being able to like go back and actually see what was done on a project um, when. So, I mean, it's, um, so I don't think that it's going to be an, be an issue given the state of our building permit files. Perfect answer. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, $64,000 question. Uh, who wants to do the motion? Would you like me to read a suggested motion again? Yeah, and I won't. I won't go too fast after the fact. Then. Uh, I'm <laughs> go ahead, Karen. To okay. Uh, we would recommend that uh, commissioner move to recommend approval to city council of LA 2021-02 based on the findings and recommendations contained in the staff report. I so move. Okay. Have a second. I'll second. 
All right. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion passes. All right. Good work, Fred. I think all of us. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, other discussion and informational items. Um, Fred, you have an update on the, the TSP, the Transportation System Plan? Yeah. Um, let's just, I mean, let's, I know that you folks sat through the um, City Council presentation. I want to give you folks an opportunity to share any thoughts that you might have had, like that, because I mean, I know that we're, we were in a sort of a foreign setting. If you've thought of something that you'd like to share, I mean, let's start there. And I, I feel like that would be great. Yeah, Becky. I had a question. There was the graphic. And then when you, when you go to the website and take the survey, it's the same one about how much money different thing or how much money it's will be spent, but it doesn't have any place where you can see what projects would be approved with that money. Mm -hmm. And I found that really disconcerting. If I had to choose, yes, I want to try and find this much money because I think these things are important. There's just a total and I don't know what's included in that total. Right. I, oh, that's a great, um, that's a great comment there. That is in, um, cause I sort of did the same thing where I went into the, the document itself, the, uh, tech memo six and I saw what sort of fell into those various rankings but I mean the the ease with which to do that is not even in the document it's not quite not quite there yet um, either so I think that's a good comment um, let me let me write that down okay Because that would be, I mean, it would be really good to say, hey, these are the high priority pedestrian projects that we identified. Right. There was a question oh. about, I'm sorry, just one more. There was a question about um, intersections or crossings. And I found the maps, you couldn't enlarge them, so I couldn't really tell what it was asking. And I wasn't quite sure in the survey what it is you were looking for. So I just kind of skipped that question. Okay. Um, so let's, I'll pull open the thing and um, let's see if we can find it. I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, hello. Fred, can you share the web address again of the? <laughs> yes, it is www.independencetsp.com. Perfect. And then, oh, come on. All right, can you see that? So independence tsp.com. Perfect. So here's the link. And it's you're talking about key connections. Now, Becky, can you are you talking about this right here? Like if I click on one of these, you can't see these. Oh, it wasn't on the key connections. It was further into it. I think it was like pedestrian stuff. Something like this? No, that was a, it showed street maps and little red half arrows. Oh, you're talking about the um, new local street connections. Yes. And so when you click this, um, yeah, I'm, I was sort of, I mean. I didn't understand what the map was asking for. Oh, I, I see. Enlarge it enough to try and really figure out what streets might be involved. Yeah, I see. You know. That's yeah. it. Thank you. What is the question? Do you agree with the local street connections and what would you change? You know, so, so many of these things are right. Whoops, I'm sorry. Uh, 
um, right near new development. And so it's, or where new development is likely. And so they're showing, hey, we want a connection into this as this portion of Southwest Independence develops. We wanna make sure that there's local street connections that come into this lot and this lot. So, you know, this, this is more of, this is not my favorite map, uh, but but it, it makes sense. I mean, I get what they're doing. Um, so any other thoughts about, uh, Alex, you were gonna say something. What were you gonna say? I, there was some feedback around parking for downtown. Yeah. Um, and, and sort of some direction, it seemed like that was given around sort of like event-based parking. Um, and I sort of, I wasn't gonna maybe argue or, you know, it, I wasn't gonna say anything, but I mean, I think, I, I, I don't think that's maybe the right, seems to me that we had kind of identified is this group uh, that we were not going to sort of ease of vehicle transportation was not necessarily the goal of, of that we had thought as like the primary function of the TSP. And so, and I, I understand sort of like event-based frustration, sort of, sort of, you know, a handful of events a year, but it just doesn't seem to me that that's kind of what, at least what we had talked about, that didn't seem like what we were kind of interested in. So I just wanted to make sure that was verbalized. I right. I agree with Alex on that one, that, you know, we talked about the trolley and better pedestrian routes so that closer people could be pedestrians into our events and that would alleviate parking. And um, one thing as I look around downtown, you know, an audit of our accessible parking might be a stronger use of our time than trying to make sure we have endless event parking um, when we could tackle event parking and other solutions. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I definitely appreciate what you're saying. Um, I think that's, that's great. Um, I, I definitely, just to third that, I guess, <laughs> um, that I think there's ways to identify, not to say that we shouldn't be thinking about event planning because, or, you know, parking for that, because obviously that is something that we are using to attract tourism and people here to the community, but there are definitely ways that we can address that by having designated event parking and then having a trolley or event shuttles that take people where they need to go. And I, I think that's the route we should be focusing on and spending attention on analyzing that aspect versus just, we need to put more downtown parking in for that sole reason. Right. So, so I'm sorry, I, I don't, I don't know much about how I missed the one Fourth of July when I started here because, uh, well, it was, uh, well, I missed it, let's say, um, and so, and then it didn't happen last year. So explain to me like how parking works for a Fourth of July. Like, I mean, do do. <laughs> uh, it's everybody parks. I mean. So we live between fourth and fifth and people and people just park in the neighborhoods and then just walk down. And it's not, I mean, yeah, you have to walk six blocks or seven blocks, I guess, if you're visiting or don't live down. I mean, don't have sort of, I would say the privilege of living down here, but I, yeah, I don't know. People park as far south as where I am, south of River Road too, and, and walk up and as a resident, you know, the next day there's some garbage and you go and you pick up that falls because or whatever, but it's, I think it's more of, you know, do we have the accessible parking in the right places and people who have the abilities they need to walk or whatever can get where they need to go. Where we yeah. live in Colorado, there's a huge um, outdoor uh, sculpture, uh, gar uh, well, weekend of sculpture shows and they have parking at the um, big supermarket parking lots and they rent school buses and bring people down to the park where the sculpture show is. And maybe there's something you could, you could think about that way 
in the old Roth's parking lot and then renting some school buses to take people back and forth. And that could alleviate people coming, trying to park downtown because they were parked almost as far as 7th Street on G last yeah. year. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, I, I think, oh, sorry. I was, I'm not saying it's not an issue. I'm just not sure that building <laughs> parking lots downtown is maybe like the right the right call. Mm -hmm. Right. Sounds good. I get that. Um, all right. So let's. So. I mean, one thing that I kind of felt about the presentation was that he he, um, he didn't actually get into a whole, whole lot of the alternatives that were actually like sort of the the preferred alternatives. And so I guess that was a couple of those are some of the things that I just um, want to ask about. And that's my and, that was one of my questions, Fred, where they had the overlay picture of the five. I'm pretty sure it's five photos. Yeah different patterns is are any of them ranked in preference by the consultants or by the city of independence or is it still kind of up in the air yet well you know i think that every i think that, that that's part of what um what we're doing with with uh, with this is we're trying to ask people you know what what you think what is these are three preferred alternatives but ultimately, what is your preferred alternative? And um, let's see if I can actually scroll in on this thing. So the, the people, the general public oh. that's commenting on this and doing the YouTube open house, their comments will be seriously considered by the consultants then? Exactly. Yeah. When, I mean, I'll just be honest with you. Of these three, um, I, I actually like trying to figure out how to, use the street network that we have better and providing people a way to get a left onto, onto Monmouth, right? I actually think if we could figure out a way to like essentially like use the grid and let people get around in downtown easily, I feel like that's going to be our, um, that's going to be our best solution to the issue is what I personally think. Um, I mean, each of these, I think, has issues. I think that while this would be cool, I, I mean, having some sort of plaza street on on C, I mean, I think you folks hit the the pro some of the problems with this at the last meeting. This uh, uh, turn lane um, going eastbound has all other problems because um, if you think about how a turn um, or a traffic light is going to work here. There's going to be through traffic going like this, but what happens when a car is turning left here, right? And so this is green, and then you got a car turning left right here. And say somebody's walking across the street or whatever, you know, there's going to be cutting of, you know, it's going to be tough to find find a gap, right? I think. I think we all kind of recognize that. And so really like the the least disruptive to downtown and really the most sort of reflective of how downtown is sort of spreading out is provides people a other way to get out of um, this intersection, right? And it could be at second, third or fourth um, for what I think um, is just, that's sort of where I'm at. Um, but I mean, are, does anybody else have any other ideas or what are your thoughts about that? Um, I think the trick is being able to cross 51 or get a left, you know, that's what we had talked about before, like either fourth street or seven, you know, seventh probably as we said was too far. I sort of like that a rabbit hole that we were falling down of like, how would you, what are kind of creative solutions? Because unless you can get that left in a safe manner, you know, I feel like you are inviting quite a bit of maybe risk yeah. to, to drivers or pedestrians or whoever, um, just traffic generally. Um, 
if you if you don't figure out a way to get people across or get people to be able to make a protected left. Yeah, yeah, and so one of their one of their um, recommendations is, oops, I'm sorry, uh, is extending the two way left turn lane, basically, um, tell forth here on. Um, I gotta move you guys. Um, uh, two fourth. So right now, uh, the road sort of looks like this, right? Two lanes. They're talking about. Um, they think if you added a two-way left turn lane in here, that it's gonna provide people an opportunity to say, take a left out of uh, Fourth Street into that turn lane and then get over in a, in a safer way than they can right now. Because right now you have to sort of like wait until there's a gap both ways. With a two-way left turn lane, you can get into the center turn lane and then get um, over to the rest of the way. Do you, what are your thoughts? Do you think that that's going to be sufficient to, um, to offer that left or would you like something more uh, more protected than that? What do you think, Alex? Yeah, I'll let other people weigh in. Um, let me think on it. Okay. I can see turning, having two turn left, two lanes there. If you're, what if you want to turn, you're going east and you want to turn left onto fourth, where do you go then? Right. So, I mean, and that's, that's the thing with two-way left turn lanes is you got to sort of negotiate them with, with people that are um, in, in the lane. But I mean, we have them elsewhere in town. Um, I mean, a good example is um, the turn off of Deanne Drive um, with the, the River Place Apartments. Um, and that is a, that is a two-way left turn lane. And I mean, people do use it because cars are coming 45 and they'll pull into the center turn lane and then get over. Um, traffic at least would be going slower here. I'd rather see a light or even a traffic circle myself. I think I would probably struggle with, I don't love the look of like sort of a three lane spot down here I, and that's just it's almost purely aesthetic and just in terms of driving in but at the same time it feels like that would be a a center turn lane seems like that might be the compromise solution to what we're talking about mm -hmm. i don't know if i love it love it but it seems like i see what you're i see the the rationale of making it safer to be able to at least get out onto the road before you have to merge into the mm -hmm. flow of traffic yeah mm -hmm. We've talked about speed issues too. And I feel like farther down by Winco where there is that lane, people drive faster because it feels bigger and like yeah. they have space. So are people actually going to be driving the speed limit of which we are saying is slowing is another question, I think. Right. And I mean, I'll just be honest. It's like, I've, for the whole time, I've tried to not, I've tried to push back and be like, is there any way to not get a three lane cross section here? Um, just because I, I'm completely with you, it, it makes it feel like a road, you know? It, um, and I think that what we, uh, what we, what you folks want is, um, you know, you know, to make our community walkable, bikeable, pedestrian scale, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and when, uh, yeah. And so, so, I mean, this, this right here is one of those issues that is so difficult to try and figure out because, you know, I mean, what, what they have essentially come back with is they say, hey, you know what, the lack of east-west capacity just essentially drives this, you know, it just fundamentally you need it because there's not enough capacity going west and east through the community. Now, one interesting idea that they talked about but I mean of course it's like it's money um, is throwing in some landscaping in the center of the road 
um, you know, so you're, um, so you're breaking the scale of the road. So you have the two-way left turn lane at portions, but you, you also have some, um, some, you know, non road improvements at other portions. And I actually thought that that was an interesting idea, uh, especially if you can get more crossings, um, out of that approach. So especially when you go on the other side of the community, like if we did it down here, I think it's, it would be well, well worth in this part of the, um, in this part of the community, it would be well worth it. But I mean, I'm gonna just zoom out so we can, uh, so we can all see this. Um, like, I mean, imagine there is not a single crosswalk from, um, shoot, I don't even know. It's it might be fourth to to Gun Club, right? Um, yeah, it's something like that. So imagine if you put some landscaping or something or a center uh, uh, a median, and it wouldn't be through the entire stretch. You would have to because I I imagine that would be a really really expensive project. But you throw a median in a couple of places along the roadway. So perhaps down here, then all of a sudden you can get a crossing, right? And that would be, um, that would be a good thing. So. So I guess I have a question if ODOT won't put two stoplights on that street, how are they with landscaping and pedestrian crosswalks adding across? Well, I think that they would, the, the thing about the stoplights is we could ask for a stoplight. Um, it's, we, we could absolutely ask for a stoplight. My question for you is, if we put in a stoplight, where would you put it first, fourth or seventh? <laughs> fourth. <laughs> Corby is seventh. We could do a Facebook community poll and have the community poll. Oh, yeah. let's not. What about both? <laughs> let's, you say let's not? Yeah. Have, I love stuff like that. I love seeing what people have to say. Fred, or the lack of crosswalks from 4th Street up to McDonald's because it's a state highway? Uh, I mean, no. It's, it's street, but it's a state highway. It's, it's partially because of the character of the street. You know, traffic engineers hate to put in pedestrian crossings because they give the illusion of safety, right? And they And ultimately, they feel like they just, they, they make it more dangerous. And so, I mean, really, there's no good place to put a, a, a crosswalk here right now. I mean, keep your life in your hand. If you like, this is where I turn off to go to my street. And I'm going to very off topic really quickly. With all this TSP stuff, see the, the state of this street here? This, oh, I know. This is how it is from downtown to Monmouth to 99. Yeah, and I noticed today up at uh, across from the high school in the True Value that they did fill the potholes again. But with all this TSP stuff going on, does the state have any plans to? Becky and I talked about this the other day. Grind this down and put a new pavement or asphalt road in. You know, I asked I asked that question uh, last week. Um, you know, because I was because you know there's so many things about this road that, I mean, you guys know, I feel like these bike lanes are way too, way too uh, rough right now, right? They're, they're yeah. too small and they're, they're slanted, right? Um, and so um, I, I said, I said, and they've, they've, we've, the, the TSP plan has talked about expanding those, potentially narrowing, narrowing those lanes and expanding those bike lanes out just a little bit. There's not a whole ton of room to do much there. It's about 44 feet from curb to curb. If you go 11, 11, 11, then you could have two five and a half foot bike lanes on the, on the side, right? That's way better than are out there right now. That's like a 13 foot wide center turn lane. And so I was just asking, hey, is that even a possibility? And I said, when is the next time you're painting the road? And when is the next time you're going to repave the road? And the, the repave the road question, um, I mean, it's not, it's not on their uh, state improvement program right now. So it's going to be a while. 
Hmm. Well, at least I see the ODOT people out there quite frequently, you know, patching the potholes and it's gotten worse with another wet, another wet winter. But yeah, this, this is, it's in numerous places. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, the Fred to the question of like that center turn lane, I think the other part that makes me slightly nervous is if you needed a cross, like it really would bifurcate. It feels like that would bifurcate sort of everything. Because if yeah. you needed a cross, then you're crossing three lanes. And I, I don't know, it just, it feels a little bit sketchier. I'm almost more in favor of the stoplight, to be honest. Yeah. I, I don't, yeah. I mean, I, what do I know? I'm not a transportation person and whatever else. It just seems like functionally that might be safer for everybody involved, yeah. um, especially pedestrians. And, and you got a school a block away. Yeah. Yeah, that's, well, that's the other reason. Yeah, it it might be worth a conversation with Corvallis because, like South Corvallis on ninety nine, has those huge lighted pedestrian crosswalks to try and get people across the essentially six lanes. And yeah. unfortunately, there's been many incidents, even with the lights, about would would they go that path again of having lighted pedestrians, or if they could have put stoplights in, maybe that would have been better. Because I think. Although this is a smaller, less busy, less lesser speed area, yeah. they are struggling with this same sort of how do you get people in cars not to have not so many issues. Yeah. And I'll just say out here, like a central median, uh, they call them a refuge island. Um, I mean, in this cross section right here, a, a refuge would be ideal right because right now people are having to go across this anyways like the other day i saw a guy running across this you know um and if he if he didn't have to worry about getting across all three lanes of traffic at one time and could go here and cross this lane first and then look and cross this lane that's way safer um that's that's just a way safer situation for um people cross it i like the idea fred i mean i think that's as a as a little bit of a maybe i don't know if it's a stop gap but just as some other because not being able to cross from fourth to gun club is a little bit sobering i never really considered it like that and that's that's kind of nuts it might it might be seventh but i mean oh, okay i mean <laughs> yeah three blocks yeah i know yeah that's wild yeah yeah no it 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 definitely is um Okay, um, so I mean, really, I think that those are two of the toughest issues that we're we're trying to figure out, right? I just feel like, but they, they've been the toughest issues that we've had the whole time. <laughs> it's it's not new that these are the two toughest issues. Um, uh, I mean. I, um, I'll just, I'll show you, um, just one more that we're, that we're still just continuing to struggle with is Main Street and River Road. I, I mean, it's still just a difficult situation. It's so, so tight in there. Um, and so you'll see that, um, right now they're proposing essentially a, a left turn lane with an always stop, um, a left turn lane southbound with an always stop. And then they have this alternative here, but I think they realize that this coming off the bridge is not realistic for the foreseeable future. Um, so um, what do you guys think? I mean, I don't know. He, he um, our consultant, says that this will work. So I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the, of the doubt on, on this one. But I mean, do you have particular thoughts about Main Street and River Road or do you have? Um... Well, I would, I would support that. Um, the years I worked in Salem and came home that way, you would come up to the bridge and I would turn right on the main there and even though it's 25 miles an hour, just right there coming north, it's still, there's kind of a bend in the road. And sometimes there would be a lot of cars parked there. 
and you could not see. Mm. And certain times of the day, well, I, I get there about probably 6.15, 6 o'clock, and you might be waiting there 10, 15 minutes to make that turn sometimes, at least during the week. But, uh, hey, I don't, I, I can't foresee a, a traffic circle thing working there, but that would, I think that would definitely improve what's happening right now. All right. Brad, is it too small for the traffic circle? It probably is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely a, it's definitely a tight intersection. Well, you wouldn't want to take away that little piece of ground on the, to the right there that the guy's always selling oranges and there's used cars parked there, would you? <laughs> it's just entrepreneurship. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love the idea of a traffic circle there. I don't think it's, I think it's 0% feasible um, fi financially or sort of logistically or spatially or anything else. But I think that would be amazing. Um, yeah. you know, if given a infinite budget and a magic wand. Yeah. Agree, Alex. Yeah. You know, when you think of the cost of stop signs, it's like, uh, at least that would be worth a, I mean, that's worth a try, right? We could at least try it out with some stop signs and so see if that worked. Are, are the consultants, Fred, totally against the traffic circle there? No. Um, I mean, I think that they think that it's, it would be costly and it would be tough to fit in there too. So who owns, uh, Marion County owns that bridge, right? Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. There is, yeah, yep. Yeah, so, okay, well, I think that, I mean, those are really, I mean, I guess what we're talking about, anybody want to talk about anything else? Um, basically, what you can do is you can come onto this and you can go through it at your own speed and just uh, search what, what you're interested in um, and leave leave thoughts, leave comments. Um, basically, I mean, just in real quick summary, sort of the tabs that they've broken it down are sort of the key goals, right? So improve connectivity in the community, right? That's west, east, north, south, right? Improve certain key connections. Basically, that's like fourth um, Polk and Maine, uh, Maine and Monmouth and Maine and River, right? Improve those key connections. Then improve bicycle infrastructure on key streets. Basically, the idea of that is make major roads as wide as you possibly can, <laughs> or the bike lanes as wide as you possibly can. Um, and then try and get a low stress network. So off those main roads, try and make those routes as safe as possible, as direct as possible. Um, and then, yeah, improve transit if possible. So basically you'll see that those correspond with all of those. Those are some of the key goals that we've sort of coalesced around um, with this update. I guess that's about it. Any questions? Any I'll start. Thoughts? So, um... I guess I'm kind of wondering about the procedural aspect of this. I mean, we have, we have one more co-work session with the city council, right? If I remember that looks correct. Yeah. Then after all the data is collected and decisions are made, there'll be a, there'll be a proposal that we'll deal with first. Yeah. That will be the first vote on the TSP. Yep. And recommend it to city council then. Yep. That's right. So we'll just have to, Hopefully, with all the data that's collected with, with the individuals in the city and whatnot, we'll have a set parameter what to look at for how the TSP is going to set up. Yep. Okay. Fred, can you remind us how long the open house is going for? Oh, yeah. It's going until uh, March 8th. Um, so feel free to visit the site and um, yeah, leave your thoughts, share with your friends, do all of that stuff. Um, the more feedback that we get, the better, right? We want, yeah, we want a lot of feedback. And um, also, um, there is a YouTube live uh, open house um, next, 
next Wednesday, or no, this Wednesday, shoot, uh, two days from now at six o'clock. Um, for the last one, I sort of pretended like I was uh, the, the talk show host and um, he was, and our consultant was uh, our subject matter expert. So um, I did enjoy that. Um, so ho we're going to try and recreate that by uh, again this next time. Um, so yeah, if you want to tune into that, or if you have specific questions that you think of be between um, now and then, if you got a particular pet intersection that you, you're interested in, um, send that in and we can ask them about it. Okay. Any other comments, questions, concerns? I had one. Hey, Becky. Um, my neighbor who lives past the end of Maple Street to the west is being asked by the developer for an easement through his property. So if people can't get out on 10th and Chestnut, they want to be able to go through his property and come down Beckon Lane to get out, which of course would jam them onto 7th Street. But I'm not really understanding why the developer is even asking my neighbor for that and why they're not helping the city put Chestnut through for a better ac access and e egress. I'm, uh, I'm not certain uh, about that situation. I, def I definitely saw on the plans that there was going to be an easement coming out that way, um, but I didn't ask the question of why that was or um, I, and I assume that they had come to some sort of agreement. Um, He's still thinking about it, but you know, the rest of us who back up to Beck and Lane, we don't have any say on it, but we were told that wouldn't ever be a very busy, it isn't a street and it wouldn't be busy. And it seems kind of um, jumping, it's, it's putting the emphasis in the wrong place instead of making sure that you get chestnut through and having better access, able, ability to get in and out of there without banging into a big dump truck or something, or if there's an accident and it fouls up the intersection at 10th and Chestnut, they shouldn't have to come through Dale's property and back down Beckon to get out on 7th. Just a comment. Any other comments yeah. or concerns? All right, well, we can move to the uh, motion to adjourn part, I believe. So moved. Is that, is that the motion that I'm making? Yeah, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll How about second. that? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. All right, thank you very much.